I like to go bowling with my friend Bert. My bowling ball and my bowling ball. All right, Paul Crines here with Bowling Marketing and Positive Business Results. We are in downtown Seattle at the home of the Professional Bowlers Association. Uh, we're, at this moment, we're in the conference room uh, of the PBA offices. And in a second, we're going to have Tim Morelli, who's the Director of Marketing and Licensing, give us a little tour of the, of the office. Uh, this is kind of uh, where it all happens, what you see on television, uh, all kind of starts here. And, um, and then we're going to get into our, another one of our series of uh, quick tip videos on filling holes in your bowling center. These are revenue generating, um, traffic generating, marketing techniques, uh, customer retention ideas designed to you know bring customers through your doors and help you keep those customers and put money in your cash register. So let's uh, let's go see Tim and uh, and we'll be right back to do our video. PBA office. office is Tim Morelli. Tim, what's your um, position? Uh, Director of Marketing and Licensing. All right. And so, uh, right. this is uh, Fred Schreier's office, Commissioner right. and CEO. He's down in Texas, Arlington, this week. All right. Where are you going? Folks from USBC and BPAA. Okay. And then we've got uh, IT. No, <laughs> IT feet. Who's this? Hey, how you doing? Good. Jim's our resident Jim. bowler. Jim? I am. Uh, what's your name, Jim? Jim. Jim. Russo. Russo? Okay. Paul Crane. Hi, Paul. How are you? Good. Not, not okay. only a uh, bowler, but also a uh, application developer. Cool. If you got problems with live scoring, give uh, Jim a call. My office. <laughs> Big mess. Okay. Looks like a creative guy's office. I need to do some spring cleaning, I, I see, or summer cleaning now. Barb Wilt. Hey, Barb. Paul Crane's. Paul. How are you? Good. It's nice Good. to meet you. It's my wife, Patty. Hi, Patty. Hi. Ben was supposed to be along, but uh, he's at my daughter's house. And then, we're into accounting. Okay. Hi. Hey there. And, the back office. <laughs> Dead computers. Ah. Servers. The IT. From the road. The there. IT. Uh, yeah, junk room, server yep. room behind this door, copier, and then a little uh, kitchen. And there we are. And you see on the walls, of course, our Hall of Fame. Yeah, I'll go back and shoot a Everyone bunch of Everyone immortalized those. here. Yeah, once uh, they get inducted, they get their portrait, right? Yep, yep, tradition still to this day. And then... Um, we've got, and you know, when we get done with the tour, some of this stuff comes back. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, we're also a storage uh, closet for the off season. So, wh and, now where do, you, uh, where do you park the trucks? Um, you know, the trucks um, used to come back to Ballard, and and uh, they would park them uh, near that Fred Meyer, uh, right off the locks oh, yeah. area. You know, uh, uh -huh. but um, lately. Uh, they've uh, just been leaving the trucks where we end last, and then uh, one truck always goes with the senior tour, and and then they wait to roll the trucks to summer series. The ne you know is typically the next okay. stop, and then there's a few other uh, uh, stops in the summer that they might make. But okay. typically they just rest where they where they they yeah. where we were last. You know we find a local facility and then pick back up when we know where we're going in uh, the next fall. So, so they probably they got some heading out to Chicago for the Geico. Yep, yeah. yeah, we got some folks heading out. Um, uh, most people in the office here in Seattle won't be going out for that event. Most people who travel with the tour, uh, uh, telecommute, work from another office. Uh, right. Some are in Portland, some are in California, some are in Milwaukee. You know, yeah. uh, so. our our forces, our workforce is all over the country. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thanks very much, Tim. Okay, the uh, filling holes. The most expensive thing in a bowling center uh, is an empty lane. You've heard me say that many, many times. Uh, to fill holes in our bowling centers, you know, we need to identify the hole. We need to try to not fall in the hole. We need to select the best filler material to put in the hole. And then we need to start shoveling. And don't stop shoveling. Uh, it, sometimes it's a matter of how much you throw against the wall before something sticks. Now. With regard to filling holes, if we can reduce attrition 
uh, by providing a better customer experience, uh, we're going to have fewer holes to fill. In other words, if we don't lose as many customers as we typically are going to lose uh, by making a better effort to keep the customers that we have, uh, then we're not going to have so many holes to fill. So that's one secret to filling holes is just don't have as many holes. Another thing to remember when, when talking about filling holes is to address the underlying problem that causes the holes rather than simply putting a band-aid you know, on, on the problem uh, or looking for a quick fix solution. Okay, we've got to build a strong foundation. Uh, the most important issue in the bowling industry today is finding entry-level customers, entry-level bowlers, and taking care of them once we've found them. Okay. Simple enough? Sound simple? Find entry-level customers and then take care of them once you've got them. To do that, and, and in this series, uh, we're going to be talking about all the ways to do that. Uh, we're going to talk about the ways to, to find those customers, bring them in your doors, and to, to take care of them once we've got them. The most important issue uh, today, uh, is, uh, along with that, is to remember that bowling uh, is a grassroots requires grassroots marketing. Okay, that uh, traditional mass media doesn't really do a whole lot uh, in bowling. Uh, you know, with the exception of a few really carefully calculated campaigns that could help us uh, drive business or drive a, a particular message, such as I'd love to see uh, a campaign where we promoted league bowling. That league bowling is fun regardless of uh, your ability, regardless of your age, regardless of your social status. Um, but other than that, bowling as a neighborhood business requires neighborhood marketing techniques. We're going to talk a lot about that. Uh, another thing to remember is that bowling is a commodity. Okay? That means that, that it's the same no matter where you do it. Uh, bowling in New York is the same as bowling in San Francisco is the same as bowling in Chicago and every place in between. Uh, a lane is 60 feet long, there's 10 pins at the end of the lane, the maximum score is 300, you throw the ball, it comes back hopefully, uh, and then you do it again. Uh, so the only thing that people leave with when they leave our facilities is a feeling and that feeling is either good, bad, or indifferent and we don't want it to be uh, bad and we certainly don't want it to be indifferent. We want that feeling to be good. We want people going out of our centers saying things like, uh, man, that was, that was so much fun. I can't wait to come back here uh, again and do this again. Uh, but remember, it's the experience. It's all about the experience that the customer has because bowling is a commodity. They can get bowling uh, anywhere. And, and another thing to remember is that um, to, to do this, to be able to do this, is going to require education. And that's going to be education on your part, which is why you're watching this video. Education on your uh, employees' part, where you train your employees and coach your employees and empower your employees. Uh, and then actually education on the customer's part. Uh, you know, helping customers understand that uh, you don't have to be a great bowler to, to bowl in a league. Uh, helping them understand that, um, that you do need to have some basic skills to be able to really enjoy this this game and then to be able to offer something that teaches those skills. We need to shift our paradigm. Uh, the bowling industry today has problems that cannot be fixed by thinking the way we thought when we created them. So we need to think uh, outside the bowling box. Uh, we need to uh, think outside the bowling box with regard to our marketing, with regard to our promotions, with regard to how, who we hire and who we keep, and, um, uh, and then also how we just run our bowling centers. Uh, it is a different business than it was 20 years ago. Definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Uh, we in the bowling business are famous for that. Uh, we just keep doing the same thing over and over again thinking that something different is going to happen. Not going to happen. Alright, let's play a game real quick. I'll be Alex Trebek. We're playing Jeopardy. Uh, so I'll give you the answer. You give me the question. The answer is 70 million. Category is bowling. Answer is 70 million. What's the, an what's the question? Okay, time's up. Question is, how many people go bowling at least once every year? 70 million. Alright, now we're playing Double Jeopardy. And if you missed this one, we're going to be playing Final Jeopardy. The answer is 20 million. Okay, time's up. The question is, 
How many of those 70 million never return? We have 70 million people that try bowling at least once every year. We have 20 million of those don't ever come back. That is a scary, scary figure. Now, and we're not even talking about league bowlers here. That number gets even scarier when we talk about first year league bowlers. So, here's some things to remember, some facts and figures to think about. Most casual bowlers are never introduced to proper bowling techniques. We don't suggest that somebody should learn how to bowl. Unlike a golf course, uh, very few people step onto a golf course without ever having taken a lesson or gone to a driving range and, and at least learned how to swing the club and you know hit the, hit the golf ball. Some do. I usually play behind those people on the golf course, but, uh, but most don't. So we don't introduce casual bowlers to proper bowling techniques. Fact. Even cosmic bowlers get tired of throwing the ball in the gutter over and over and over again. It's just not fun, especially at four, five, you know, six dollars a game uh, to throw the ball in the gutter every time is just not fun. Fact, uh, we know that today's recreational bowlers and casual bowlers are going to be tomorrow's avid bowlers and hopefully league bowlers if we develop them, and that's the key word, develop. Some more facts and figures. A significant reason uh, that people give us for why they quit bowling is because they tell us it was no longer fun. We know that people who improve their skills have more fun. And we know uh, that people who are treated special have more fun. So it is about having fun else, why else what would they do it? I mean, that's why people come to our bowling centers. So, some more facts and figures. We have five million fewer uh, certified league bowlers than we had 25 years ago. Five million fewer. We're down to under three million uh, sanctioned league bowlers. We know that a league bowler's value is worth four or five hundred dollars easily, easily. So that, those five million lost bowlers uh, represents a financial impact on the industry of over two billion dollars uh, in lost. Now, all you're probably worried about is your particular bowling center. It doesn't really matter what's going on uh, nationwide, uh, it, but in your bowling center is what matters. But most likely, you've experienced some of the same declines uh, that we've seen on a national scale. So what we're going to learn in this series of videos uh, over a short period of time is I'm going to share dozens of practical ideas with you that are designed to uh, fill holes uh, in, uh, in your lanes and to put money in your cash registers. I'm going to give you some tried and true uh, methods of implementing those ideas. You know, that's one of the biggest challenges we have. There's tons of ideas out there, but nobody knows how to go about implementing them. So we're going to give you um, the ways to do that and the tools to do that. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to help you shift your focus on what's really important in your business and that ultimately is the customer. Um, it is your employees really is the, uh, the key, but uh, you take care of your customers, they'll take care, or you take care of your employees, they'll take care of your customers. Uh, we're going to discuss ways to help you hire and keep employees who are family friendly, who are kid friendly, who are people friendly. It's astounding to me how many people we have working in customer facing positions, front counter for instance, and clearly they hate people. They don't like people, yet we stick them behind the counter where they interact with our customers. It is unbelievable how often that happens. So I'm going to try to open up your mind about how you uh, look at the bowling business and growing your center's revenues. We're going to do that in future videos and um, uh, I want to thank you for uh, being with us today at the Professional Bowler Association headquarters. Please look forward to the next Filling Holes video from Bowling Marketing and Positive Business Results. Have a great day.